Hi, good evening. I'm Alan Horman. I'm the curator at the Hampton History Museum and the keeper of Hampton's Air Power Parks collection of aircraft. I want to welcome you to the uh, Hampton History Museum's Port Hampton Lecture Series. We're coming to you from Air Power Park tonight. Why would we be coming to you from Air Power Park? That's a very good question. We have a couple of things to do tonight. Number one, we want to sh experiment here a little bit on how we might reach you in a way uh, different from what we've done in the past. Previously, we've asked you to come into our museum, get around us in, a, in our great hall where we would have a wonderful lecturer, and we would be able to uh, enjoy each other's company. But things have changed a little bit lately, and uh, we don't have the uh, luxury of doing it that way right now. So what we're doing is we're experimenting with technologies and, and formats that allow us to reach you differently. One thing we're going to do is do this webcast uh, opportunity, take that opportunity. And we're doing it from Air Power Park because we've been doing a lot of work here at Air Power Park. So uh, just uh, join us on this tour. We're going to explain to you a little bit about Air Power Park, how long it's been here, its history, why it's here, and the things we've been doing over the last couple of years uh, to rejuvenate it and uh, what's coming in the next year or two. So bear with us. I hope you'll be patient with me. I'm going to use notes. I have no chance of getting this all uh, from my mind, so I'm going to uh, follow some notes. But uh, let's get started. Uh, first of all, what I have behind me is a good example of what we've been doing here. This aircraft uh, stands normally when uh, there's been rain in some water. So we're raising it up out of that, and it's the thing we're going to do throughout the park to protect the aircraft. So we're going to come back to that a little bit later. But one thing I wanted to talk to you about first of all is the Hampton History Museum. You probably noticed that we were uh, missing for a couple of weeks. We had to shut down uh, to be safe during the coronavirus outbreak. We reopened a couple of weeks ago and uh, we're open to the public now. Our hours have changed a little bit. We're open from 9 until 4. Uh, if we close down at 4 it gives us a little time to sanitize the building and make ready for the next day except on Wednesdays and Sundays when we open at 1. So Wednesdays and Sundays we're open from 1 to 4. On um, the rest of the days of the week we're open from 9 until 4. So please do come back and join us. We do have some uh, new protocols in place. We're keeping the place very clean. Uh, we're asking you to wear uh, face masks as we will. I have mine right here. And uh, come and join us. But what we can't do is we can't have school group tours, we can't have large tours, and we can't host music events and our lectures like we usually do. So that's one thing you're going to see us do tonight is experiment with how we can reach you in a different way, in a different format. This will ultimately be transferred into the History Museum, so we won't always be going remote, but we'll have speakers come to the History Museum or speakers coming to you from their dining room table. We're just learning how to do that uh, in a way that brings them to you in a new format. Air Power Park has been open throughout the coronavirus crisis it being outdoors. It's a wonderful place to come where you can socially distance from strangers, be with your family, uh, spread out, enjoy the park. It's open from sunrise until sunset, so you can still come here. We did have the main building and the museum of the Air Power Park closed for a few weeks as well, but we're open back up there as well. Uh, that wonderful collection of model aircraft are still in there, so you can come pay us a visit. So come to the park, but let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, what we're doing here. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the park itself. The park began as an idea in the early 1960s as a way to show the city's appreciation to our wonderful partners out at NASA Langley Research Center and uh, Langley Air Force Base. So we wanted to develop a park as part of our system uh, that honored uh, that heritage and the people that brought that heritage to life. What you see behind me is a boilerplate uh, build of a Mercury space capsule. Most of you are aware that the Mercury program was based here at Langley. So all of that early development of uh, human spaceflight took place right here in Hampton. So this particular piece brought to the park was, was dedicated and installed here October 1st, 1963, 
on the fifth anniversary of the founding of uh, NASA, which the folks from the NACA would say that was just the day that the name changed, but NASA counts uh, October 1st, uh, 1958 is their birthday. So this item was brought here, uh, installed and dedicated on that fifth anniversary of the founding of NASA. It was one of the earliest pieces brought to the park. The aircraft we started in front of, the T-33, was one of the very first brought here as well. Uh, just behind the uh, space capsule here is an F-86. That was one of the first aircraft brought here as well. So this all was happening in the uh, mid-1960s, 1963 and 1964 and 65. More aircraft and missiles and rockets were installed, and the park began to grow and blossom. The, uh, the Little Joe rocket was installed during this period, but most of what you see in the park today was in this section of the park. That was installed in the early 1960s, in that period between 63 and 65. Now what was going on at, and during that time was the development of an idea of a, a larger presence. The original building here was just a wooden structure, probably 800 square feet which was the Hampton Visitor Center. You come in and got brochures of, of Hampton, uh, city maps, the such as that. But they were developing throughout that time a larger building, a larger structure, and you see that behind me here. This is a geodesic dome, and it was completed in 1968. One of the few surviving geodesic domes in the country. It was a hot architecture uh, during the time, uh, wonderful to look at a very structurally sound and interesting technology, very difficult to maintain. <laughs> so they began to die of their own weight. In front of the building, right behind me here, you see the, uh, the Hawker Kestrel. This is an aircraft that was developed by Hawker Aviation of Great Britain, and it was a, a developmental prototype, an experimental aircraft that was designed to uh, test concepts of vertical flight. One of the great goals of aviation throughout our time in flight has been to develop a practical vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The British, uh, with Hawker Aviation, actually managed to crack that nut. This experimental aircraft uh, was one of, I believe, nine that were built by Hawker Aviation that were sent to the United States and Germany and kept in Great Britain for experimental purposes. Two landed here in Langley. So you can see this one here, and there's another one at the Virginia Air and Space Center. So these are just kind of highlights of, of uh, material that's on the tour here. But I want to tell you a little bit more about what's been going on here, other than just the aircraft that you can see. Some couple of years ago, uh, we invited you into the History Museum to uh, tell us what you thought about Air Power Park and how we might use it. So we listened to you and we got the message from you that uh, you rather liked Air Power Park and you wanted to keep it around and, and do a better job with it, uh, do a better job maintaining it. We heard the same uh, request from our partners at NASA Langley Research Center and Langley Air Force Base so we developed a plan two years ago, largely based on what you told us and what we thought we observed as the needs of the park, that would take place over five years in five phases to rejuvenate the park, to bring it back to its former glory. Uh, an interesting thing that I learned in doing my research about the park was that first year of operation, there were 100,000 visitors that first summer of operations of this park. Not been that good lately, but you know what, we're going to try to get back to something like that. So what we did was we presented to our city council a proposal uh, describing to them the work that needed to be done here. Largely it began with the aircraft themselves were kind of dull and dingy and badly in need of a, of a paint job and they needed uh, the, the bits and pieces of rust removed. So they gave us the go ahead they said, please take care of that for us. So we began phase one of our five phase plan, included repainting and restoring all the aircraft. Now we began that work uh, last summer. So it's been going on a little more than a year. 
As a matter of fact, one of the landmarks of that process, you can see behind me the, uh, the Little Joe rocket, which was used in the Mercury space program, designed and built here in Hampton uh, as an experimental device that allowed you to get a Mercury capsule up into suborbital uh, air so that you could test its aerodynamic qualities, its weights and balance, how it could be retrieved from the uh, sea without having to go to the expense of an actual space capsule and, a, and the uh, launch vehicle. So our wonderfully efficient folks here at Langley developed this mechanism to get it up there and doing that work without all that expense. On July 20th of last year, we invited the community to come in here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the uh, landing of Apollo 11's crew on the moon, first moon landing. So we had a nice crowd of about a thousand people came out here on a sweltering hot Saturday <clears throat> and enjoyed activities that we did with our uh, friends at NASA and we unveiled the freshly restored capsule and how that ties into a broader history of, of uh, this air power park. I discovered in some doing some research that when Apollo 11 had its crew land on the moon, on July 20th, 1969, folks watched it on TV, but after they watched it on TV, they came to Air Power Park to be together to celebrate that accomplishment. I thought that was a wonderfully appropriate thing for them to do. So what we've done, uh, back to the, uh, the, the theme we were talking about of what we're going to do to restore the park, we've done our work on all of the aircraft, all of the rockets, all of that has been complete. So those are all, uh, have a fresh paint job, Rust is, has been abated, and uh, we're working on some other things about how to maintain them, how to give them an annual washing and all of that. But we've also been doing some work here at the entrance of the Air Power Park, which was more or less obscured by a couple of trees, uh, and we have taken the opportunity to install a couple of rockets out front here. These are Nike Ajax missiles that were uh, used all over uh, the United States and with our NATO allies as the first successful anti-aircraft missile battery type. The closest one to us here was in Fox Hill. And these, aircraft, these missiles were designed to uh, be launched uh, with a range of about 30 miles and uh, knock down Russian bombers before they could get to a strategic asset. Hampton is a very strong strategic asset. So we've installed those out front here to give folks uh, a welcoming indication of what this park's all about. Plus we've installed this uh, colonnade of flag poles here. We don't have the flags up yet. Uh, we're sorting out some issues uh, with the actual rigging of, for the flags. Uh, got a learning curve there myself. But ultimately what you'll see here are on the sides uh, the flags for all of the service branches plus NASA. And on the center mast here, which was installed early in the park's life, you'll see the national flag, the state flag, and the flag of the city of Hampton. So we've, we've begun the work. We're two years in. Uh, we've made great headway. Uh, come back to us in a year and this dirt I'm walking on will be nice lush grass. But these uh, features here, the flagpoles and the missiles, were just installed a month ago. So we've not had time to, uh, to, to get any more grass growing here. And if you've tried to grow grass in Hampton in the summertime, you realize it's not really going to happen. But we ran into another issue. So we've taken care of the things that are at our fingertips. Uh, taking care of the aircraft, remounting some, some objects that need to be mounted in a different way. But there's another kind of fundamental issue here that's... Uh, that's worrisome, but we think we have a solution. Our charge in phase two of the work, which has happened over the last six months, is to develop a plan to regrade and develop a drainage system for the park that will allow it to be dry and firm underfoot and very useful as a park and safe and conducive to, for the aircraft. So uh, a, a wonderful engineering company has come up with a plan for us. What we intend to do, as funding becomes available, is regrade the land here. Uh, and by regrade, I mean we will uh, change the topography here. So we will raise the ground level here. From here, probably 20, 30 inches. 
so that it will go, it will drain in a, in a single sheet very smoothly from the sidewalk there all the way to Newmarket Creek that you can see in the distance there. Uh, that will keep water from pooling up here and, and standing underneath the aircraft and the rockets. If you've been by Air Power Park or in Air Power Park after a wet week or two, first of all you would notice that where I'm standing you'd probably be up to your ankles in mud and this rocket and the other aircraft would be standing in water three or four inches deep. Not good for you, not as much fun as it should be, and certainly not good for the aircraft. So, our plan is to figure out a way to get that water to drain away from here. And that grading plan will do that. So hopefully in the next year or so, probably next summer, you'll see that kind of work going on here. So don't be surprised if you see dump trucks hundreds of dump trucks bringing in fill dirt to raise the whole level here. And when we do that, we've got other work to do. We can't just raise the ground level without taking care of what's already standing here. So aircraft and missiles and stuff that you see close to the ground will all have to be raised up so that it's clear of the new grade. That's why they need a curator to help with this. That's an exciting part of the project for me. We get to move around all of these wonderful chess pieces here, aircraft <coughs> and spacecraft. Another problem that we have that uh, is not evident very much today because it's a wonderfully sunny day and it's been dry for several days is Newmarket Creek, which is just there in the distance, wants to come out of its bank during a storm. I see Seamus is showing you our Nike Hercules missile. Uh, you're seeing a lot of rust and degradation. Uh, that's what happens when water stands in the park and we can't get it to drain out correctly. So that is the kind of thing we are desperate to prevent from, ha from happening going forward. That's why we're doing all the work that we're doing out here. So you can see Newmarket Creek back there and the wetlands beyond it. The boundary of Air Power Park is uh, we're actually bounded by Mercury Boulevard, LaSalle Avenue, and Newmarket Creek. So when we have a tropical storm or a nor'easter <clears throat> or sometimes just a nasty low, Newmarket Creek will come out of its banks and it will flood all the way from where we're standing. This will be six inches deep in water all the way up to the fence that we came through. So our plan is to not only do a grading here that would make the water sheet away once water is in the park or falling water from rainfall will go to the creek, but also uh, prevent that kind of flooding coming in, the tidal flooding coming in. We'll talk a little bit more of that, about that in just a second. But what I want to talk to you about right now <laughs> is one of the kind of ongoing projects we have. This is uh, an F-89 uh, Scorpion. Uh, it was an interceptor aircraft from the 1950s. A uh, big ponderous aircraft designed to carry a big ponderous radar set and launch rockets and missiles at Russian bombers before they got here to be attacked by Ajax missiles. It suffered like the T-33 did from having been too close to the ground and its mounts gave way and the wheels and the landing gear were actually down on the ground. So what we're doing here as you can see is the aircraft itself has been raised up off the ground. The landing gear is a good foot clear of the ground. It's propped up on its uh, wing spars, the strongest part of the aircraft. And uh, tomorrow morning we'll be pouring uh, new concrete footings that the aircraft can be let down on and then a steel mount will grab the aircraft by the landing gear and keep it clear of the ground and clear of any water that might come it come its way. So that's the kind of work we need to do for all of the aircraft that are out here. So these two we're moving forward with earliest uh, because they are clear of our regrading plan. Once we start dumping dirt in here the other aircraft are going to have to be raised up like that and relocated as well. So I want to talk to you a little bit about one other feature back here that we're working on. And there's an interesting tale that goes along with it. So we've, we've mentioned Newmarket Creek half a dozen times. Wonderful water feature. Newmarket Creek goes all through Hampton. You can go all the way to Back River. You can get all the way down past Coliseum. As a matter of fact, if you took an Ocean 2, 
you could take a raft all the way into Newport News on Newmarket Creek. But Newmarket Creek <coughs> is a tidal creek. It floods, water comes over its banks into the park where it will stay for days at a time. So you've, we've talked about the grading plan that will allow that to drain off. We also have a plan in place that will keep the water from coming out of Newmarket Creek and getting into the park. So let me here to the banks of the creek. It's a wonderful view. We hope in the next year or two to build a barrier here, uh, environmentally sound, uh, that will prevent Newmarket Creek from getting out of its banks and coming into the park. Not only will this bulkhead or, or riprap do that, uh, it'll also retain the bank. As you can see, the bank has begun to shear away because the current is very strong uh, through here. So it's eaten away much of the bank here. As a matter of fact, the old timers who have been here for uh, many years and saw the aircraft installed here at the beginning of Air Power Park can attest to the fact that about 20 feet of bank is missing now has been eaten away. So I understand from uh, folks who know more about this than I do that where we're looking right now there used to be a picnic table and chairs and you could sit behind this wonderful uh, F-101 Voodoo aircraft that was based out at Langley Air Force Base and enjoy a picnic on the banks of Newmarket Creek. Unfortunately, uh, times have changed, sea levels have changed, tides have changed and the banks here have begun to, to erode a bit. We have a solution for that. So about 500 feet of this creek bank will be retained by a bulkhead or a riprap wall to prevent it from further erosion <coughs> and to prevent the water from jumping over the banks and coming into the park and endangering the building and the aircraft here. One other feature I want to talk about uh, which is part of our plan moving forward is we have one of the city's best access points for Newmarket Creek. Now you, Newmarket Creek is a wonderful asset for people who enjoy nature and enjoy the water in Hampton. So we have here a floating dock that allows you to put a kayak or a canoe into the creek here. Just saw a gentleman carrying a canoe across the park through the aircraft, brought it down, put it in the creek not five minutes ago. But uh, this dock is a little bit worn out and it's uh, small and it is not accessible to all of our citizens. So the new plan is to replace this dock that will be integrated with our new ba barrier here and it'll be a much larger dock with more available space and it'll be handicap accessible. So that is part of our new plan. I want to thank you for being so patient with us on this tour, an explanation of what we've been doing out here at Air Power Park. I hope uh, you'll take it to heart, uh, and I hope that we are doing uh, what you had asked us to do those two years ago when you came into the museum, and uh, we asked you your opinion. So. Uh, I guess what we're doing is we're going to wrap up here. I, <laughs> signs. Interpretive signage. Oh, see, see, now here's another thing. This is the ex part of the experiment. Seamus is uh, reminding me of things I've forgotten. So another thing that we've done out here that you haven't seen yet that'll be coming this summer is there are no labels, no signs that tell you what these aircraft are and what's going on here in the park. We're fixing that, and those signs that will tell you about each of these aircraft, they'll be installed this summer. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this month, they'll be out there, and you'll be able to come down here, learn a little bit more about the aircraft that you're walking through, and uh, take a little bit back home with you. So uh, you'll enjoy yourself, enjoy the aircraft, learn a little bit, and mostly we want you to get the message that... Uh, Hampton has this wonderfully deep and rich heritage of aviation and space research. Uh, our allies out at Langley Air Force Base have been here since 1917, as has uh, NASA Langley. And this park is here to honor them 
to draw attention to that heritage and to honor those folks who have made that heritage so rich and successful. So come and join us at Air Power Park. Uh, get a first-hand view of all these things. And, and like I said, like tomorrow morning, you'd be able to see this aircraft have some concrete poured underneath it. You'll see things going on. But also keep in mind that we're working on other ways to access us to get through to us, for us to get through to you at the History Museum. So uh, for the next few months, we'll be doing stuff like this, uh, remotely uh, or on site, but webcasting, so that you'll still be able to come in, get a taste of our wonderful lecturers, Seamus's wonderful music series. We're working on a, the challenge of getting that together for us. So keep an eye on our Facebook page, keep an eye on our website, You'll see us uh, developing things and bringing them to you on a regular basis moving forward. Soon enough, we'll be back in the old pattern where we can bring you into the building and you can be part of our close circle. But even then, we're going to continue doing webcasts like that. So you can come to us if you can. If you can't, you get on your computer and you go to our website. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you soon.